Hello everyone. Welcome to part 2 of 54321 things. I am genuinely so happy about the reception of the first part. And I'm having so much fun writing this. So I'm definitely going to do something like this in the future. Because the shorter challenges are just so entertaining. I'm very happy about this. As always, special thanks to my lovely patrons and all of you who subscribe and watch these videos. You are keeping this channel alive and going. Thank you very much and I hope you will enjoy. What got you in such a good mood? Suna closed the chat and looked up, finding Osamu watching him with almost curious gaze. He was still ordered to not move around too much by his doctor which put him in a grumpy mood for several days. But it seemed like his interest in Suna's action chased the gloom away. At least for a while. I came up with a pretty good challenge. Oh? And should you be telling me that? Suna shrugged. It doesn't matter. It's so on the nose you would figure it out anyway after the first question. It's the answers that are interesting, not reaction. Okay, you do, I suppose. Are you going to ask me? Do you want me to? Asamu let out a quiet laugh as he repositioned himself on the couch to see Suna better without having to crane his neck so much. You'll ask either way, won't you? I can't miss the opportunity, can I? Go ahead then. Alright. What are five things you like about me? Raising his eyebrow, Osamu measured him from head to toe before a smirk made its way to his lips. Your eyes. Suna rolled his eyes, knowing well what Osamu was referencing but refusing to give him the satisfaction. The fact he had to wear his longer shorts in those days was enough. That's one. You have four more. Then your sleepy face. It's adorable. And your style. Other than that, your determination and dedication are high up on the list. How nice of you. Four things I like. Volleyball, sleeping, onigiri and coming into the restaurant unannounced. It's a nice surprise, isn't it? Yeah, but I usually don't have anything prepared for you that way. That's fine. Three things I look good in. Jersey. Apron when you actually get into cooking. And nude. Suna smacked his arm, but didn't comment on it further. Two things I say a lot. I'm too tired for this. And you won't believe what happened. Seriously though, you should stop gossiping so much. It might come to bite you. Suna hummed, though the acknowledgement wasn't really there. Sure, sure. Is that one thing you would change about me? No, I would say be less lazy. But to be fair, at this point it's part of your personality, so if you suddenly were different, it would feel weird. Smiling, Suna ran his fingers through Osamu's hair. It was strangely sweet to hear it from his boyfriend despite the implications, and Suna's heart swelled knowing he could sleep calmly. Is this the whole challenge? Yep. Great. Come here now, I need some cuddles. Suna happily accepted the invitation and snuggled into Osamu's arms. Drifting off the moment his head touched Osamu's chest. For Taichi, there were only a few things that scared him more than asking Hayato questions about himself. Not that he expected Hayato to break his heart through a silly little challenge, but it never felt pleasant to just straight up ask his partner on his opinion of him. Sure, he could hide behind the challenge now, but still. 
Personal questions weren't his friends, especially when Hayato seemed to be somewhat grumpy that day. Are you even watching? He winced at the badly hidden annoyed undertone in Hayato's voice and focused on the TV screen again. I am. No, you aren't. You were all spaced out just a moment ago. At least pay attention when you chose the program. Taichi's shoulders slumped. I thought you don't mind. You can switch it if you don't like it. I just thought... He stopped, unsure what exactly he wanted to say. He clenched his hands together in his lap to stop himself from digging his nails into his skin. A short silence settled in the room despite the TV still playing, before a warm hand made him loosen his grip. I'm sorry, I didn't mean it like that. What's on your mind? Daichi shook his head. It's stupid. I, it's not, I'm sure of that. What is it? It's, it's a game of sorts. It's not important. Tilting his head, Hayato shifted next to him to drag him to his side more comfortably, a soft hum escaping his mouth. What's the game? It's some odd trend Suna dug up, asking five questions of one's partner. But it's really not important, you don't have to answer if you don't. Ask away then. Daichi paused for a beat, fighting hard on his lip as he lowered his gaze and voice. What are five things you like about me? The silence stretched. Then I had to squeeze his hand. Is that part of the game? Or is there something more to it? Both, I suppose. Okay. Well, it's not like my answer would change. I love everything about you. That's why I asked you to marry me. But if I have to choose just five... Your smile. The real one. It makes your eyes sparkle, did you know? And your hand. Then, uh, the way you get flustered. It's so cute when you blush. Your kindness is high on the list too. And your selflessness. He sighed softly. Though I think you should be more selfish sometimes. It's not healthy to always put others first. Daichi blinked rapidly a few times, his heart skipping a beat when he looked up and met Hayato's gaze, as honest and loving as always. I'll... I'll try. Um, for things I like. Quiet, noodles, music, and nature. Hm. I need to take you out again soon. That is heart fluttered. Sounds good. Three things I look good in. A little mischievous smile played in the corner of Hato's lips. My arms. Also my hoodies and any other piece of clothing because you would look gorgeous even in potato sack. Taichi blushed, much to Hayato's delight. Two things I say a lot. My name and I'm fine. Especially when you aren't. He caressed Taichi's cheek, suddenly strangely serious. I know it's not easy for you to open, even now, but I would be much calmer if you talk to me when something troubles you. Is... is that the one thing you would change about me? Hmm, not really. The only thing I really want to change about you is your last name, so you wouldn't be bound to your family anymore. The smile returned on his face as he brushed his thumb over the silver ring on Taichi's finger. Luckily we have a means for that, right? 
I would never change anything about you. You are perfect the way you are, even though you probably don't see it. But I do. And I love you with my whole being. That she could about cry. Though, judging by the way everything blurred suddenly, it wasn't really just about. Torn out of his thoughts by another frustrated groan, Dasha glanced up at Terushima sitting next to him and smashing the buttons on his controller in obviously growing agitation. Come on, come on! Can you do what I'm telling you to do? Dasha had to smile. He wasn't overly fond of playing video games, but watching his boyfriend playing had never not been entertaining. They played together sometimes, of course, but this time Dasha decided to opt out of the experience. Perhaps for good now that he watched Terushima throw his hands up, grumbling at the death message on the screen. Damn it! I almost had him! It's okay. You'll do better next time. Terushima whined quietly, and with a little pout on his lips, he crawled over the couch to gently flop on Dasha's stomach. It's not fair. Chuckling softly, Dasha ruffled Terushima's hair, surprising himself with the thought that he actually enjoyed being pinned down like this. May I interest you in another game? As long as I don't have to fight any bosses, sure. He looked up and leaned his chin against Dasha's sternum, apparently feeling something was different about the game. What's on your mind? Taking a deep breath, Dasha tried to shrug lightheartedly, though he would lie if he said that, even after the other's reassurance, he wasn't nervous about the outcome. Just asking some questions and getting your answers. Okay, shoot, I'm ready. What are five things you like about me? That's an interesting game. Ah, let me think. Eyes, definitely. They were the first reason I fell for you. Your smile was second. Really? I wasn't smiling much back then. Yeah, but when you were, it felt like my heart was going to break free from my chest. I love your dedication too, and the amount of mental fortitude you have is incredible. Last... Probably the fact that you always keep fighting, despite everything. Dasha pressed his lips together to settle the surge of emotions rushing through him with Terushima's words. Four things I like. Ah, oh, that's easy. Volleyball, ice cream, ramen, and plushies. True. Three things I look good in. Coats, sweatshirts, and turtlenecks. He sighed, almost disappointed. It's such a shame winter's ending. I'll have to wait another half a year for autumn. He will survive. Besides, spring is still cold. Um, two things I say a lot. I'm sorry, even when you don't have to. And I trust you. He reached up to caress Dasha's cheek. Say more of the latter and less of the former, hmm? In most cases, you have nothing to be sorry for. I... I'll try. And... one thing you would change about me? Shadow Dasha wasn't unfamiliar with crossed Terushima's face. Your past. I know people say we are shaped by our past, but I would much prefer if you weren't. You deserved much better. Unable to find words or his voice, Dasha ran his fingers through Terushima's hair, relishing the way his boyfriend snuggled to him. 
Perhaps the address in the chat weren't so far off with their assessment. Thank you. Now that Anoshita thought about the challenge, he found himself regretting Suna didn't come up with it sooner. Like several months sooner. Maybe it would prevent him from overthinking so much if he heard Tanaka's answers back then. Or maybe it would send him down a much wilder spiral. It all depended on what Tanaka was about to tell him. Ryu? The man in question looked up from where he sat slouching over the laptop screen, and Anashita's heart skipped a beat when he was flashed a bright smile. Yes? Do you need anything? I was just wondering if you shouldn't stretch a bit. You've been sitting like a shrimp for over an hour already. With a tired sigh, Tanaka nodded and straightened, stretching his back a bit. Enoshita was by him in a second, instinctively laying his hands on Tanaka's shoulders to help him loosen the stiff muscles a bit. Judging by the content Grant Tanaka let out, he did a good job. Thanks, darling. Who would have said looking for a job would be so time-consuming? Enoshita hummed quietly and continued to wrap Tanaka's back feeling the muscles slowly relaxing. Give it time. You still need to fully recover before starting anything, so there's no need to rush. I know, but it feels wrong to leave financing everything on you. Ew, it's not an issue, really. Just focus on getting better, okay? But you could answer me some questions now that you are resting. Tanaka raised his eyebrow at him, though Enoshita could tell he was more intrigued than worried, and tucked on Enoshita's hand to lead him to sit on his lap. It was something he did quite often recently, and it never not made Enoshita blush. Alright, what is it? It's just a little challenge Suna came up with. What are five things you like about me? He almost squealed when Tanaka squeezed his thigh, a mischievous smile curling his lips. Your legs. I don't know how you do it, but I've never seen prettier thighs than yours. Enoshita blushed harder, a light shiver running up his spine whenever Tanaka's hand moved. Since when are you like this? I'm sorry, but I spent four months unable to use the lower half of my body while having you around. Enoshita smacked his shoulder, much to Tanaka's amusement. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. But I really like your legs. And the way you blush. It's adorable. I also love how caring you are to everyone. And that sort of gentle strength you have. You know, how you can always put people in their place or make them listen without ever raising your voice. And last but not least, your cooking. I'm glad. For things I like? Your job. Romantic dramas, curry and snow. How do you know about the dramas? I just know, darling. I just know. Okay. Three things I look good in. Oh, your work uniform, definitely. Then sportswear, even though you don't wear it often. And then that short bathrobe Noah gave you. Enoshita covered instinctively. We don't talk about that, remember? That was the worst gift I've ever got. Well, it's true it was more a gift for me than you. Still, do things I say a lot. Don't do anything stupid, usually aimed at me, and I can take care of that. Do I really say it that often? Yep. Okay, and 
one thing you would change about me? The hands moved from his thighs to grip his sides and pull him closer to Tanaka, making him squeal this time. So that you learned to ask for help sometimes. He cupped Enoshita's cheek, suddenly much more serious than a second ago. You don't have to do everything yourself. Alright, I'll... I'll try. Good. Come here now, I've been touch star the whole morning. It took Iwaizumi a while to finally catch Oikawa not busy, as his fiancé went from practice, to meeting, to gym, to bed the whole day, rendering it impossible to get a solid answer for anything from him. He wished he could do more for Oikawa, but except his hopefully reassuring presence and some stretching exercise, he couldn't do much. Just wait and hope for the best. Then, finally, Oikawa waddled out of their bedroom, looking slightly less exhausted than two hours ago. Feeling better? I suppose... as much as I can after today, anyway. Smiling, Iwaizumi opened his arms towards him as a silent invitation, chuckling when Oikawa rushed into his embrace like a kid towards sweets. How about you jog your mind this time instead of your body? Bold of you to assume I don't use my mind when playing. I know you do, but how about something more simple? Oikawa groaned quietly, but then nuzzled a bit deeper into Iwaizumi's arms and nodded. Okay, what is it? Just some questions. Shoot whatever answer comes to you first, okay? Five things you like about me? Oikawa paused for a beat. Interesting question you have there, Hajime. But alright. I like your biceps. And your strength overall. Then... Your voice. Oh? Yeah. You have no idea how nice it is to hear that soft grumble of yours. Always sends nice shivers down my spine. And it's great because you are a born leader. I like that too. And the way you are with kids. You always soften so much. It's so lovely. If I zoom, I couldn't but smile. You took it seriously, huh? Of course. It's an important question. Alright. Four things I like. And a sport. Tofu, cookies, and when you can challenge someone for a competition. Hmm. I like you more than cookies. Three things I look good in. Gym clothes, shorts, and anything with short sleeves. They are still on my biceps, aren't you? I would not on them all the time if you let me. Not happening. Two things I say a lot. Well, more shout than say, but move it. And Shitikawa. I haven't called you that in years. I give a shrug. Must be my imagination then. Rolling his eyes. If I may gently smacked his arm, which seemed to have little to no effect on the slowly snoozing man. And one thing you would change about me? Nothing. You are you. That's good. That makes no sense. But it's weirdly sweet, so thank you. Mm-hmm. For nothing. You are going to fall asleep on me, aren't you? The only answer he got was the first soft snore. He sighed in a loving exasperation, 
the smile on his face softening as he leaned down to kiss the top of Oikawa's hat. Get some rest, darling. You deserve it. As strange as it was, Sakusa found himself to be both slightly worried and curious about what Atsumu's answer would be. Sure, he might end up disappointed or hurt, but he refused to entertain those thoughts. Atsumu wasn't the type to break his heart through five questions. Perhaps just through the last one. Though he could hardly think of some flaw that Sakusa didn't know about already. What got you so interested? Mm hmm? You've been staring into your phone for the last 10 minutes without moving. You never do that unless something catches your attention. Shrugging, Sakusa put the phone down and groaned quietly when Atsumu threw himself on his lap. You should be paying attention to me. Why so? I see you all the time. So mean! Seeing each other isn't the same as paying attention. He pouted, and Sakusa rolled his eyes. Fine, how about this? Let's do a challenge together. Is that to your taste? As expected, the word challenge worked like a charm. Atsumu perked up like the fox he secretly was, his eyes no less than sparkling. I'm in. What is it about? Answering some questions. What are five things you like about me? Huh. Interesting challenge. Well, there's a lot, but five main would be... Your curls and moles. And also the way your forehead scrunches when you think. As if to emphasize his point, he rubbed the space between Sakusa's eyebrows. The stupidly sweet smile on his lips. It's adorable. And from non-physical things, your determination for sure. When you set your mind onto something, you go for it no matter the setbacks. Even though it can be a bit to a fault sometimes. And also the fact that you are still super shy despite being a star. It's cute. Sakusa grumbled under his breath trying in vain to hide the crimson rising into his skin. Did I tell you you talk too much sometimes? What? You asked? Whatever. Four things I like. Mm, volleyball, that's for sure. Then sushi, cleanliness and me. You fancy yourself high? Look me in the eyes and tell me it's not true. Sakusa chuckled, leaving it without comment. In the end, it wasn't like Atsumu was wrong. Three things I look good in. Jersey, suits and nude. I will positively strangle you. You can strangle me with those ties. He helped when Sakusa punched his shoulder. The yelp soon turning into a pleased hum as their lips met. Say whatever you will, I won. It's not a competition. Two things I say a lot. Atsumu and don't do anything stupid. Usually right after each other. Wonder why. He took a deep breath. Some of the worry he forgot thanks to Atsumu's shenanigans returning. He knew about his flaws. And there was a lot. And he could deal with Atsumu seeing them as flaws too. But what if Atsumu managed to find something else after all? Mommy? Sorry. Um, and one thing you would change about me? Atsumu seemed to think about it for a while and then shrugged. Maybe just so you would stop frowning so much? You are so handsome when you smile. It's such a shame you are hiding it. Huh. Actually, you know what? Change that only at home. 
I don't need some squealing fans phone over how hot you are when you smile. Mine. Sakusa snorted a short laugh, all worries falling from his shoulders. I'll try. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. As I said, I did enjoy writing this so much and I'm so happy about the reception of this mini, <laughs> mini thing, mini challenge. And I'm definitely going to do something like this in the future because it's such a nice feeling to like leave the story and the plot lines in the background and just enjoy the pure joy of the challenge itself. That is not to say that I'm not enjoying the story heavy challenges, but it's a breath of fresh air, isn't it? So if you have an idea for a challenge like this that, that can be done very quickly, throw it at me either into the request form or preferably into the request form, or you can put it into the pinned comment. But tell me, I am starving for ideas <laughs> once again. Surprisingly enough. If you have any requests or ideas, the request form is linked in the video description. See you next time.